All right, welcome back. Okay, so hey, you might be noticing Ty looks a little bit different this time around. Well, that's because the Switch port, and I think any other ports, now have costumes. I think this was like a Kickstarter thing. But uh, yeah, we're doing our next level. It's Shipwrecks. And hey, look, we already have a platypus. Lovely. Welcome to the Great Barrier Reef, full of beautiful fish, friendly natives, and inviting sandy beaches. It's a beaut spot for a swim, if you know how. Which Ty does not, because he's had some issues in uh, with previous levels with water. But I figured like a little swimming outfit might fit this level pretty good. So yeah, third level, and it's a water level. This is also the biggest level so far. So finding a lot of collectibles is going to take some time. Oh, there's something shiny in the water. But unfortunately, Ty cannot swim. Much like Sonic. So yeah, this level is the Great Barrier Reef. Yeah, that's that seems like a proper fit for a game about Australia. Again, in comparison to the games that would come later, this is probably the most grounded of all the Ty games. At the very least, so far. Nothing terribly crazy about it just yet. You know, aside from the usual platform mascot shenanigans here and there. Yeah, those zoomerangs go pretty far. Ty, mate, good to see you again. G'day, Rex. You saved anyone today? Funny you should say that. Elle went for a bit of a swim out near Danger Spike. Danger Spike? Where's that, Rex? Where do you think, it's Ty? It's a little spot, not too far from Shark Reef. Yeah, and? Well, anyway, she's an excellent swimmer, but she hasn't come home yet. We're starting to get a bit worried. Strafe. I'm on lifeguard duty, so could you have a look for me? Well, I would, mate, but I, I can't swim. Tell you what, I'll teach you. See? Me. So Ty already surpasses Sonic because he learns how to swim. Then tap the jump button to start swimming. Okay, wish me luck. By the way... Those boomerangs of yours won't work underwater. But I got a prezi for you that'll fix that. These are aqua rings. I found them in an old shipwreck years ago. They cut through water like a hot knife through butter. Of course physics you work that way, mate. The water and grab them. Well, then they're all yours. So regular boomerangs won't work, but these special aqua rings will. Underwater combat. The aqua rings work like regular boomerangs, but you can only use them underwater. Oh, and one other thing. You're not a fish, mate, so keep an eye on your air supply. Yeah, thanks, Rex. Right, gotta remember how to breathe. Thanks, Rex. This switch. It'll open the shark door so you can be on your way. Sweet. Okay. Even in fantasy Australia, it just sounds like like stuff is here trying to kill you. Danger spike. Shark reef. Look at all the fucking sharks in there, mate. So many sharks. You wouldn't even believe it. It's like, come on. Why would you swim here? It looks pretty. Well, you know, for an early 2000s game, yeah, but still... Again, this just sounds like a death trap. I don't care how good of a swimmer you think you are. Danger Spike and Shark Reef! Great work, Ty. You've learned how to swim and use those aquarangs. With a bit of practice, you'll be a champion swimmer just like me. Dear beauty. This is my good mate. She'll show you the way to Danger Spike. She doesn't have a name, but we'll just ignore that fact for right now, mate. You can swim faster by tapping the jump button to gain speed. <laughs> Let's go find L. So yes, shipwrecks, the Great Barrier Reef. This is a big, big level. Very big, very large. A lot of collectibles all over the place. 
again, thank goodness cheat codes exist. Because otherwise, trying to do a 100% run of this game would be more than a little challenging for me. I'm not going to lie. Again, not to harp too much on my old Jack and Daxter playthrough because, uh, that's embarrassing in its own right. But still, I, I remember having to go back to a few pre prior stages to say like, Oh, look, I remember there was a precursor orb or there was a power cell that was here. But, you know, you couldn't find it because, yeah, yeah, you know... Here, I don't ha really have that excuse because I can just use a cheat code and it'll have a big old shining light for me to find the collectibles. Oh my goodness. There are also depth charges in the water. Again, even in fantasy like Sonic the Hedgehog Australia, this place just wants to kill you. Again, I've never been to Australia myself. I've heard that it looks lovely, but still, I've heard plenty of, like, jokes and rumors of, like, oh, yeah, everything in Australia, from the plants to the animals, just want to murder you. They just want to kill you. Ugh. Just, just, just throw boomerangs at everything underwater. Kill everything. Barracudas, frill lizards, don't care. Protect the environment. Uh uh I gotta save my family. Give me your thunder eggs. So yeah, I believe after we're done with this stage, we'll finally have enough Thunder Eggs to actually activate Julius's machine. And potentially get ourselves a Talisman. So that'll be pretty cool. I do like the music here. This feels like a proper track for a, for a water stage. Again, a lot of water stages and platformers are just kind of... Eh, or maybe I'm confusing those with ice levels. E either way, this one's this one's nice. It's all right. You know, it's a nice wide open area. It's not completely underwater, but the water does take up a very large portion of the stage. And as far as like drowning goes, it's not really that big of a concern. Again, you're not like in an underwater cave all that often. We're gonna go save L before you know it, but right now, just gonna try to go collect as many other, like, random collectibles as we can on the side. Oh look, a shiny thing! Oh dearie me. My sweet little angels have wandered off exploring. I'm not sure what this thing is. Now I can't find them anywhere. I've heard of its name, but Please I just can can't quite me? remember. It's not a seahorse. It's some kind of, like... There's a Pokemon that's based off this. It's, uh, I think it's called, like, uh, Dragalage. Yay! Hang on. I'm gonna see what animal that's based off of. I think it's, like, some... It's, like, some kind of algae thing. My... Babies. My babies. But where are the others? Okay, let's see. Well, Dragolage is a dragon type Pokemon. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> they are based on leafy sea dragons. Uh... And we. Yeah, leafy sea dragons. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's a marine fish in the family of Synagathidae. I, I can't pronounce these things very well. It is found along the southern and western coast of Australia. The name derived from the appearance with long, leaf-like protrusions coming from all over the body. They're not used for propulsion, they only serve as camouflage. Woohoo! <laughs> uh... Woohoo! 
Oh yeah, it's like with seahorses. The males carry the eggs. All right. Uh. Yeah, they're they're neat. They're they're pretty neat. I can't remember if these things are like poisonous or not. I would assume so if that's why they made Dragolage and uh, Pokemon poisonous. But I might be completely wrong. <laughs> Giant fish a la Mario just eats you. And even if that doesn't take off that much, like, oxygen. It also plays by Mario rules, where even if you get damaged underwater, you don't really lose any health. So you can just go back up and replenish your oxygen and everything's fine. No damage. I feel like they just got somebody around the office just to voice these things. Here you go. Oh, my babies. My precious babies. Thank you so much, little orange fish creature. How can I ever repay Its mouth you? makes me feel very hey, uncomfortable. You can have this sparkly rock I found in the sand. All right. All right. Well, you take easy. They look kind of neat, but they're also kind of creepy. Not going to lie. They're, they're kind of... Eh. Hmm. Again, what is with all the damn depth charges? Holy shit. I mean, I guess Boss Cast just like put a bunch of these in the water. But why? For what reason? Just to make Fantasy Australia look way more dangerous? Holy shit. You can play as much Marimba as you want. It's still like this place is a death trap. Why would you go swimming here? And on top of all of that, now we have quicksand. Just straight up quicksand. Okay. This is going to be a little embarrassing. I eventually figure this out later on, but for the time being, I just try to brute force this. Because I'm an idiot. I just try to brute force myself through the quicksand. When the proper way to go about this is to hit the very obvious, very large coconuts from the trees to make yourself some platforms. But again, I'm stupid. <laughs> I eventually fix this later. Right now, this just serves as a form of embarrassment. <laughs> it... It's just kind of embarrassing. Just, I can do it. I can do it just fine. Just walk through the quicksand. <laughs> oh, this is, this is quite foolish. And you lose oxygen this way, because of course you do. I'll come back for the collectible on top of those platforms a little later in the video, but still, yeah. Oh, 
Oh shit, coconut crabs. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, the costume that I'm wearing right now, I think is like a new port thing. There's a bunch of costumes that Ty can wear that references some of the later games. Some of them might reference other characters. Some of them are just, you know, for fun. I think one of them's a prototype design for Ty as well. But yeah, this is just, you get that right out of the box. So, hey, it's pretty cool. So kind of like with my Persona 5 playthrough, I might be changing up costumes every now and again. You know, just to, just to change things up a little bit. Yeah, the zoomerangs go really, really far. Again, they're sniper rangs. But sometimes that can leave you empty handed for a very long time. Oh hey, an extra life. Remember lives? Remember when those were like a mainstay thing? They still kind of are for some games, but hey, it's kind of nice. Although nowadays for most games, uh, lives are kind of like an outdated concept. Crash Bandicoot, the uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 brought back a life system, but that was more just for challenge. Oh, look, another one. These are easy to get. Freaking eels! I forgot! Out of Mario 64, no less! Could Fantasy Australia get any worse? Fantasy Australia is starting to look an awful lot like real Australia. What is with these giant fish? Holy shit! Why would you ever swim here? Why would you ever swim here? This place is a nightmare! And the depth charges! button again to swim out. You got sharks and depth charges. Are you feeling intimidated yet, Mike? Oh, this is... This is not good. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Look at all the sharks with their angry eyebrows. Oh, no. But they don't hurt you, which kind of takes away a lot of the threat they're putting off. Because, again... Your health gauge is not the same as your oxygen gauge. So it'll take off a little bit, but you can just replenish it. It's not a big deal. More or less, they just kind of knock you away a little bit. That's all. Sharks in this case are more of an inconvenience. Even though there is a literal fuck ton here. Holy shit, why is there like a dozen sharks? Why are there so many sharks? All in one place.
There's sharks and death charges and eels and giant fish and freaking thrill fish with like spear guns. This is a nightmare. Again, why would you ever swim here? This place is awful. And also these cages are not fully like well constructed. There's big holes in these things. Come to Australia. Try to kill as much of the wildlife as you can. Otherwise, it'll fucking kill you, mate. Follow me. Oh my god. Again, it doesn't hurt. It's more just an inconvenience than anything, but still. This is this is way too many sharks. Way too many. And they knock you out of the animation. Oh my god, stop. Please stop. Why are there so many of them? Uh I just gotta hit the button. I mean, at least it's appropriately named Shark Reef. Because there's just a fuck ton of sharks. I'm not seeing... I'm not really seeing a reef, though. Whatever. Let's get out of here. Off to Danger Spike. Okay. Again, there are a lot of collectibles in this very large map, and it's gonna take a little while. I had to employ a little bit of editing here and there, just to kind of cut down on time. Yeah, we do not have 300 orbs just yet. That's gonna take a minute. About more than halfway done with all the orbs. But again, it's always like the last few that will get you. Those are the most frustrating collectibles ever. I said it once, I'll say it again. Hey, look at Bilby. Again, these zoomerangs take a while to come back. They eventually do, but still. It's been 
like the first stage in Mario 64 with the big old tower you gotta climb up to fight King Babam. Or, you know, Spiral Mountain from Banjo Kazooie. But it's bigger and it's called Danger Spike! Alright. Oh, hey, look! Hey, doll. How are you? Yeah, good. And what about you? Let me guess. Rex was worried about me again? I don't blame him! That's right. Isn't he a sweetheart? Well, I better get home so he stops fretting. Right yeah, good on. luck with that! By the way, I found this on the way. Want it? Thank you! Yeah, try to avoid all the eels, shards, depth charges, barracudas, and frill lizards with spear guns. Good luck! Then again, like Rex said, she's a really good swimmer, so I'm sure she'll be fine. Hopefully. Oh my goodness. Again, why would you come over here? Sure, the view's nice, but still! Damn! It is a nice view, though, I will say that. You can see the whole map this way. And look, she's hanging out right there now. There you go, Rex. You got anything to say? No? Alright. Whatever, let's do a time trial. So, Ty, are you up for a race? See if you can keep up. Alright, so you gotta race Rex. And he is really freaking fast underwater, understandably. But he's really slow on land, which is how you'll be able to pass him up. Also, you can throw boomerangs at Rex, which is not very nice. And he does make reaction noises. Rex can jump, like, super high! Again, getting Mario 64 flashbacks, like with Koopa the Quick. Please stop throwing boomerangs at me, mate. It's really not helping my back. Yeah, Rex is super slow on land. This doesn't feel fair. He's actually pretty slow. It's it's actually a little embarrassing compared to how fast he was kicking our ass underwater. Yeah. You little ripper. You fair and can beat me. I've trained you well, mate. For one die. My uh, swimming coach gave this to me when I first beat him in a race. Now I want you to have it. Aw, thanks, Rex. Gee, thanks, mate. Cool! See, again, the marketing made Ty seem like an edgelord, but he's a really nice guy. He's pretty nice. He's a good boy. Again, those commercials just made him seem really edgy toward Mario, Crash, and Sonic. And I guess Spyro, too. Alright. We still got a few collectibles to try to find around this place. And oh boy. That's fun. There's a whole bunch of them. And again, bigger maps like this 
while they are fun to play around in, when you're trying to find all the collectibles and trying to condense it into a video for, you know, a let's play, into, you know, a sizable little chunk that's not over an hour long, yeah, it can get a little stressful trying to find all the stuff. I can make an hour to two hour long videos on, like, the Persona videos or RPGs in general because, you know, they're RPGs, but not for a platformer. No, I generally try to keep these, you know, under the hour mark. It has been a while since I played this game, and I have not beaten in its entirety, you know, the last time I did. Because the last time I played this game, again, I was a very small child. So, hmm. I would like to try to... I'm not really sure what the, uh, what the rest of the levels might look like. But I'm excited. So this is the proper way to handle this area. Don't brute force it like an idiot like me. Just knock the coconuts off and make a platform that you can cross. Hit the very obvious, very large coconuts that you can just jump across. Do that. Don't do what I did before. And there you go, there's a thunder egg. Oh goodness. Freaking coconut crabs are, oh, these things are horrible. I think they're actually around that same size in real life. Or they look like it. Ugh. Crabs are tasty, but they are, oh man. Th them and lobsters are just, they're just terrifying, like, armored creatures with chitinous hides. Like, they seem like they might be out of a freaking Lovecraftian story. just deck you in the face. They just like cold cock you in the face. I don't know. There's something oddly funny about that. Just bops tie right on the nose. I kind of wish that would happen more in like Sonic or Mario or any of these other platformers. Like Sonic's just run through a stage and just gets decked by a monkey or something like that. I don't know. I guess that's what Knuckles is for. Having to grip onto the sides is always kind of stressful. A little bit. Again, I like this game, but its controls can be a little unresponsive at times. Like trying to grab onto ledges. Like trying to grab onto ledges can be, uh, hmm, not so great.
horrible, horrible giant eels. Nightmare creatures. No, thank you. Oh, look! And this entire stage called Shipwrecks. There it is. There's the shipwreck. Another golden cog. We're getting a lot of these golden cogs. We'll probably be able to get another boomerang pretty soon. I see a bilby. There we go. Haven't had to use the cheat codes just yet. Not yet. I try to hold off as long as possible before I use them. Because part of the fun is exploring. But again, I want to try to put this into, you know, reasonable size videos. And, I, and my sense of direction is not the best. So I can't just have these things be like friggin' hour long. This one's pushing it, but still. Alright. 15 more. Obviously, they wouldn't put a sunken ship for no reason. So there's got to be something cool around it. Just comb the area for any more orbs. Alright. It took a while for me to find the opening for this thing. An embarrassing amount of time. But hey, look at that. All I had to do was just push a button on the inside of the ship. And then Bammo, you got yourself a Thunder Egg. Again, I'm just doing a little bit of editing just to kind of cut down on time. If there's a collectible on screen, I keep it in. If it's just me wandering around mindlessly trying to find a collectible in vain, then I just snip to the next scene where I have a bit more progress.
Now I'm using the cheat codes, as you can see. Some of these are pretty easy to find. Some of them are just mean. Some of them are very mean. Another thunder egg. I'm still missing some orbs. And by extension, I'm missing the thunder egg that goes with them. And here's a fun little fact. The boxes that hold the orbs do not show up with the cheats. Isn't that fun? And before we head out, let's go ahead and grab ourselves that golden cog. Got it. These depth charges cannot be good for the reef. I feel like that's gonna do a major amount of damage to this place. Aren't people trying to protect the Great Barrier Reef? This is not helping. Hey look, another golden cog. Grand total of 10. All right. Okay, now we can leave. I do believe we have enough. Let's go talk to Julius. Oh, goodness. Surely good die. You've collected enough thunder eggs to power the machine. Let's give it a go, shall we? Cool. Outstanding. Simply outstanding. The energy levels are off the scale. And, and, and... Yes, yes, I've got a lock on one of the talismans. Stand back, Ty. It's coming through. Whoa. Hey, it's a gecko tower. Ah! Bull's pen. Wait, what? Julius, why did you send me to a boss fight? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. His audio is kind of bad. So, the trick should be relatively obvious of how to deal with this guy. Doesn't change the fact that I did not do so hot on this fight. Frickin' Pig Ganon over here is just being kind of a jerk. Although the music is a frickin' banger. Oh.
So yeah, I can't trick this- I couldn't trick this boss into slamming into these pillars naturally. A bit too smart for me, apparently. So eventually my strategy was just, you know what? I have extra lives. I'll just- I'll just make him hit me and then the pillar. I always tried to get out of the way, but I was never quick enough. Yeah, he stops himself. Who gave this thing a tattoo that says mum? What kind of psycho did this? Oh, goodness. Again, I'm, I'm bad at a children's platformer game. Or am I? Because I have seven extra lives. So I can kind of do this, it's no problem. I could believe Ganondorf would go to Australia. Oh, goodness. Yeah, this boss fight took a while for me. Again, eventually I just figured, you know what? Screw it. It just kind of became a trend of like, you know what? I can kind of brute force it a bit. I want to try to avoid his attacks, but you know what? At the end of the day, it's fine. Okay. Nailed it! I meant to do that! Yeah! That audio is not great. Ew. Gotta reach in there. There we go. That was probably making him grumpy. Got a talisman and everything! Well done, Ty. It's my goggle You've gecko. Retrieved the first of the ancient talismans. When Boss Cass discovers that we are out to thwart his plans, he will do all in his power to stop you. He doesn't already? Be careful, my friend. She'll be right, old timer. Whatever that means. Struck me lucky you actually found the talisman. I just might have bet on the wrong horse. Anyway, mate, Julius has got a present for you at his lab. All right, sure. So hey, we beat our first boss and got our first talisman. Nice. I've made <laughs> a most exciting discovery. What you got? The talisman machine is brimming with excess energy from the fire thunder eggs. Cool. By diverting that energy to my special hyper techno boomerang maker, I can make special elemental rangs. Ooh. Watch. Simply smashing, I present to you the Flamerang. Cool! Elemental Boomerangs! Yes, yes, this ring can start fires and melt ice. It even has a more powerful effect on some enemies. Burn them Consider all, Ty! Burn the them all! Rang and next rang buttons to cycle through your collection. It will aid you well in your quest. Now, do try it out. Yeah, flamerangs. Oh, but you know what? We have enough golden cogs Hello, to get another Dante. one. Ah, I see you found some more golden cogs smashing. Sweet. Ty, 
Let's try them out in the Rang machine. So what do we get? Eureka! We've created a multi-rang. One of my favorites. According to my calculations, the multi-rang will allow you to throw a lot of rangs at the same time. Phew, beauty! All right, well, that's going to do it for this update. And next update, we get to try out our new boomerangs on some new levels. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next update. Until then, see ya.